So, you know, I think one of the really important things to think about as you think about the design of universities going forward is, is the fact that we've had this evolutionary development problem. So we have a couple thousand years that we developed where we had very simple rules for science and very simple engagement for science and we had, uh, we, we basically learned to do science and then for 300 years or so we, we developed a way in which science could be accelerated, the enlightenment emerged, uh, science became more focused and it was still largely directed by scientists and then in the last 60 years or so we've had this uh, almost a Faustian bargain where we have engaged in a deal where we've allowed the universities to be federalized by the national government in the United States and this federalization process has contributed to a number of things. It's contributed to the narrowing of the university's research focus. It's contributed to the bureaucratization of science itself. It's contributed to a kind of um, uh, blindness almost, a policy blindness where science is being produced and academic work is being carried out, but it's not being carried out in a way where it's having a demonstrably uh, meaningful outcome. So for instance, if you look at healthcare, healthcare in the United States is the most expensive among the industrialized nations, uh, both on an investment per, uh, per citizen or per person. Uh, it's also, uh, we're the country that invests the most in science related to healthcare, yet we're in the bottom handful of industrialized countries in terms of healthcare outcomes. Well, how is it possible? If you talk to a scientist, they'll tell you, well, it's somebody else's problem, not theirs. If you talk to people on the outside, they'll say, I don't know what all this science is that we're doing because it's not really helping us to move forward. And so we've got this, this thing where we've, we've allowed ourselves to become bureaucratized, federalized, routinized, and non-self-determinative. And so that has then contributed to the inability of the national science enterprise, the inability of the national research enterprise, the inability of the universities to engage in um, thoughtful consideration of what the country needs. They're basically, without overstating the term, they're basically trapped in a funding model which is driving their agenda, driving their decisions, driving where they're making their investments, as opposed to differentiating and following more natural market forces. Uh, they're a captive, so they basically are a captive set of organizations, unable to really advance to the extent that they should or the, to the extent that we need. Uh, solutions. So for instance, how can we have all of this science and all of this scientific prowess and, and be a, a declining manufacturing nation? It's not just about labor, that's an oversimplification. It's about the fact that that wasn't something that the federal government invested in. We can manufacture the heck out of every type of jet fighter the world has ever seen or every kind of rocket or every type of microchip because those are things that were important to our national defense. But we decided not to invest in manufacturing improvement or manufacturing enhancement and so manufacturing began to decline. So for whatever set of reasons we've also narrowed our scope, we've narrowed our impact and it has been uh, I think something that's put us in a in a poor position. So what do we need? We need to reconceptualize the design. We need to conceptualize universities that are highly differentiated, highly autonomous, highly self-directed, not dependent upon single funding sources, not dependent upon single models, and we're going to have to figure out how to do this. And so that's really what I think is most important for us to do.